viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to the first video that I am posting today. There will be another later. You know me, I'm literally loving posting videos right now. I don't know what it is. I've talked about the fact that I haven't left my apartment in a while and I've just literally been focusing on creating content and talking to the muckers and I have really dived into it for the first time in, you know, a good couple months because my normal routine would be like uploading like maybe a video a day, but also like a video every two days, whatever. Now I feel like I've been like back on the routine of, you know, like summer, like 2020 when we were doing multiple videos a day. That's literally what we're doing now. And I haven't felt as like connected to the muckers. If you don't know, I have a secret Twitter now as well. That is at muckers underscore Adam, M-U-C-K-E-R-S underscore A-D-A-M. And you request to follow it and I normally just accept within like a couple minutes or hours depending on where I'm at and I talk to you like a big group chat on there and it's been so fun and I've been talking in the comments and stuff and I just want to say thank you because I have been posting a lot of content and thank you for choosing to watch it and thank you for choosing to watch this one. The internet has been a mess lately and today is no exception. So let's get into it. We are going to be talking about David Dobrik and David is just so interesting. David seems to have no, <laughs> how do I put this, self-awareness whenever it comes to anything and I don't know if it is no self-awareness or playing dumb because I know that David Dobrik is not stupid because if you are a creator at the top of the top of this platform and you know I'm not gonna get into conspiracy theories here, but there there are many instances in YouTube, in Hollywood, where basically you, you don't be the most practical or safe or, I'm trying to think of a particular word, ethical maybe on your way to the top. So in David's case, he has, you know, been risking his friends' lives and doing stunts without, you know, proper health and safety and that kind of gimmicky shock value has really gotten him to the top of the platform. And I don't think that that's him being stupid whatsoever. I think it's actually extremely smart and calculated because no one else is stupid enough to, you know, put their friend's life in danger for views and stuff. So David's like, hmm, so I can fill this niche. And he did. And that's why I don't think that David is ever stupid. I think he plays stupid because he can get away with it because he's like, oh, quirky, like white boy who has big eyes and he's so like young looking. Like a lot of people just baby the fuck out of this grown man. I said in one of my videos, one of my last ones, I was like, you know, David is someone who's a grown man. He's like 21, 22. Y'all informed me that this man is like 27 or 26 or something. I'm actually going to Google this before I get into the video. I said Google really funny there. Google. He is not 21. David Dobrik age. He is at 26. 26. David Dobrik is a, is a grown, grown man. You know when we call James Charles a grown man? I mean it then. But with David Dobrik as well, no, like grown, grown. So anyway, he has this new podcast and he's talking about the fact that he didn't really think that you had to be safe when making YouTube videos. Ha 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 ha. He didn't think that you had to have a team. He didn't think that you had to have, you know, health and safety. He didn't think that you had to, you know, have more than just Natalie and Jason, which is actually what they say, on board whenever, you know, they're putting people's lives at risk and stuff. Like, ha 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 That's literally what this video is. We are going to watch it. I have it time stamped. I actually watched the entire podcast. This is, I think, the only David podcast I've watched in its entirety because... I just wanted to get to this particular point and I mean past it was not any better. It just seems like he plays this character of I don't know anything. I'm just your friend David. And it's not cute. It's not relatable. It's not funny. And I think his era of doing that is over whenever we saw what he did to Jeff. And also the the girls that he exposed to SA because of inviting them over to be in the Sorry, I need a burp. <coughs> All right, let's move on. We're all adults here. You know, I almost hiccuped then too. Fuck. The ghost of David <sighs> trying to get me. You know, whenever he would invite girls over that were uh, fans of the vlog and would just like have them there with Dom. You know, he's Dom's friend. He knows what Dom's like. And I just think that him pretending to be, you know, young, I don't know anything boy. I think that's over. I think people have seen through it. I think even his audience have and the people who are there now are just watching for the shock value things because there are people that just watch YouTube for shock value things like Steve-O. And do you remember Ridship? <gasps> Does anyone remember Ridship? That was literally my first exposure to Jenna Marbles. 
Ridship was basically, if you don't know, it was like a show that played on TV and it played the like riddest, was it YouTube videos? Yeah, YouTube videos of that um, week or that month. And it would be like videos of people swearing, maybe doing pranks. And Jenna Marbles, how to trick people into thinking you're good looking whenever you're not. Was that actually the title? I can't remember. One of Jenna's first viral videos was on Ridship and me and my brother watched it on the TV and we thought it was, well, I thought it was so funny, he didn't. And then I started watching, hi mother. I love you. Um, it would, you know, become this thing where I would start watching Jenna Marbles then. And I, I really, really, really loved her. And so on Ridship, that is just what popped into my head there. Um, all right. So this podcast is called David's Audition for Marvel. And I have the particular timestamp that we're going to get to right now. All right. Here we go. This is... <laughs> yeah, Y'all, just prepare yourselves. All right. Here we go. David's Audition for Marvel. Let's hear him make so many excuses for not knowing that you had to be safe when doing YouTube videos because it's just a vlog. Uh, I know, I smell wood burning. So, by the way, you can go watch this on the Views YouTube channel. I'm watching it for fair use commentary purposes. I when I walk in. No, and, and, and I think one of, the, one of the biggest problems that we encountered, like, with the videos, just in general, from, like, every situation we run into, like, whatever the problem was. Is Every situation we've run into. Come on, say it. Nearly ending your friend's life and essay claims. Say it, babe. You can say it. I know you don't want to, so you don't get demonetized, but we don't care. We'll say it for you. It's that it was, and I've said something like this before, but I think the more... Because you're so PR media trained that you repeat the same thing every time you're asked about these kind of... Sorry, I need to stop arguing. I understand it is, like, we were making... We were making such a big type of production where there were so many eyes on it yeah and like i didn't realize at the time how many people were watching the videos like no, i no. did but like I now either. now when you go back it's yeah. like some are yeah because not as many people are watching now that's the only reason you're comparing it sorry sitting at like 20 25 have no patience views, like easy like a tv show yeah. like it's really fucking freaky but at the time it definitely didn't feel like that especially because of the way we were filming things and like handling things and doing things like it was and you weren't handling them at all me, you, and my Canon ADD. Yeah, yeah. Like, no matter what the bit is, whether, like... Wow, whether we were doing, surely like, nothing will go wrong. Jump, or whether we were doing uh, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire in my car, or whatever it was. Sure. Like, whether you were doing an impression, or whatever yeah. it was. Like, it was all... It was, it was all such low production for such a... For such a production that influenced so many people. Like, whether they were watching it, or they were a part of it. I think that was a lot of words that could have been condensed to a couple. That's the trouble we were getting into, and I think I didn't put myself... That's the trouble? I wasn't good at putting myself in the leader role, in the leader shoes, when we were filming and making those things. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I was always just like, oh, I'm just an 18-year-old chap, like, filming away. I was gonna, like, scream the following sentence, but I don't know if I have it in me. So I'm gonna say it calmly. David is feeding into the stereotypes of him just being a young boy with a camera and a dream. He came to America with a dream. He's literally, like, feeling those excuses into his audience right now. That's exactly what he's seeing. He's manipulating them by bringing this up. I'm actually very proud of myself for keeping my tone here. So let's go on with the video, and I'm sure I'll lose my tone. Because it always happens. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, you're I just out there with I your camera. I didn't assume the responsibility. Jason, grow some balls! Grow some balls! Oh my god, you don't have to agree with e Oh, I've already lost the tone! I already lost the tone! <laughs> that I should have. Within seconds. When it came to filming anything. Like, right. even if it, even if, like, even if we were filming a bit and, uh, Jonah and somebody are doing something on the side that's not bit related, but everyone's there to help me with, do something, like, I'm, I'm the person in the room that should be, like, making sure everybody's okay no matter what's happening. Yes, yeah, so I don't know, know what you're so preaching here, because Cause you're still not. still have fun the same way we did before, but now there are those people in the room that are, that are making sure that everyone... You know, everyone is feeling okay. The that everyone doesn't, um... 
Is that it? You needed to hire people to ensure that your friends' lives wouldn't be risked. Are we hearing that? He literally had to hire many people so that he wouldn't off or attempted to off another one of his friends. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Oh. By the way, I'm not saying that he wanted to do that to Jeff, but. I don't know. Everybody sent me down that slide in Costa Rica. Yeah, that, that was, was kind of <laughs> fucked up, I thought. Um, but yeah, no, like, I, I, I like that about them. Like, you know, there are. Fuck you, like, Natalie. Even, even as far as, like, there are medics. Sorry. And there are. <laughs> Love you, Natalie. Actually, around. that was just satire. That was just satire. Like, all those people that, that should right, be. Right, we there. have sensitivity training. Yeah, like, when we go to a different country. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah like, there, we went to one country. One they literally, did you hear that? They said that while laughing. They needed sensitivity training to go to a, a different country to learn about cultures. Wow. One of our camera guys was complaining because wow. our lunch wasn't long enough. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And our camera guy is best friends with our producer. Okay. Yeah. It's like, literally like me. <laughs> and he was complaining to him. He's like, our fucking lunches aren't long enough. Yeah. Like, you, you make us work too, too much. Yeah. So the next trip, a completely new guy had to fly out <laughs> just to oversee the relationship between the producer and our cameraman <laughs> just to make sure our cameraman is getting fed enough. Like, a, a new HR guy flew out just to manage the relationship between these two lifelong best friends. Oh, wow. Just to make sure- I'm literally confused as to why he's complaining about an actual work environment. Like, that's literally just a work environment. You need someone for someone, someone for someone, someone for you, and someone for someone who's looking after you. That's literally how a film production works. If you want to be making these extravagant vlogs, that's what you have to do. If you want to go back to sitting in your bedroom filming YouTube videos, then you don't have to have all those people. But that's if it's just you. But you're choosing not to. And he's also making millions upon millions of dollars in YouTube AdSense yearly. And then on top of that is making millions off of sponsorships. So please, this is not someone who's like stuck for money. Um, he has a lot of money and is complaining about having to hire people. Sure, that like, that. That yeah. like... Because they're best friends, so like, it's kind of easy to be like, no lunch right now, we're working, right? Because <laughs> yeah. he's your best friend. That's you doing me. Yeah, but like a new, <laughs> a new HR guy flew out just to be like, just to be like, we have to follow everything by the rules. Well, weren't we talking about this the other day too? Like, I feel like we all feel like the pandemic kind of like brought social media to a head. Like productions and TV and film all, all had to be paused, right? People could still be in their living room making a TikTok or making a vlog or whatever it was. And... I feel like that kind of, like, legitimized social media. Now you have, like, literally, TikTokers are, like, A-list celebrities, you know? Yeah, it's, that, like, it's crazy. Kind of, kind of to that point, is, like, when we were filming, like, whether we were filming out and about or just, like, us friends, like, my parents would actually call me multiple times and they'd be like, is everyone signing releases? Like, everyone should be signing releases. Like, they're part of this, like, production that you're doing. It's like, no, 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 they're not. Like, they're my... Why do you literally need so many other people, hired people, your parents, your friends, to remind you to do things that are ethical work environments? Friends and the people we film with out and about, like, it's just fun. Like, it's casual. And, like, it would fucking freak people out if I had someone around me yeah. and was going, like, here, sign this. Even my friends. Like, I was like, I don't want to treat my friends like they're some kind of a cast. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to, like... I didn't want, I don't yeah, want to you do treated one of them like it was a stunt double. That would have changed. changed the vibe for sure. Um, and, and I think, especially back then, that was like yeah. double weird. Now yeah. it makes a lot more sense because now social media is like, is like almost at the same like respect level as like other forms of entertainment, entertainment, obviously not like films and like TV shows yet, but like it's getting up there. So like now someone making a YouTube video and having releases and things, it's like so normal because everyone wants to step into that world and everyone understands like the impact it has um and i and i regret not doing that i regret not doing i regret not taking well what i say a lot is is it was such a backyard production and i regret not treating it like it was right like it was a real production yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um i i also felt like i how can you say that after basically complaining about the things that you have to do now like you're like oh i'm so glad i'm doing this now but you just spent 10 minutes complaining about each individual thing that you have to do now to have a good work environment confusing babe took pride in it being so guerrilla style like run and gun style mm -hmm. like i took pride in the fact that like 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 we would show up to like a celebrity's house and it would be me and Jason, or me and Nat, and they were like, "This is it." Yeah. And I'd be like, "Yeah, this is it." I don't know who did you expect. Makes it feel like easier. More yeah, and it was like yeah. easier on everybody. Like nobody's like 
you go on Fallon, you're signing a bunch of things. Every everything every well, it makes it very impressive is what it does. Right, and every yeah. conversation when you go on any late night show, you have a phone call before. Yeah, and it's like this is what we're going to talk about. Like, are you agree- are you agreeing to talk about this? Mm-hmm. So you have like a pre call, but like when we were doing it, it was just like you showed up and you just did it. It was we're literally here. <laughs> yeah, we're here. We knock on the door and um, yeah. 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 And, and All right. So I really don't understand his point. Is he doing it? Is he not? Does he want to have a good work environment? Does he not? Like, he literally spent so long going through and nitpicking every single new detail that he has to implement in his life because of, you know, this new wave of media. And then at the end, is like, oh, I wish I was doing it like this forever. This is so great. What? What? M- Muckers, I want to know your opinion on this. Please talk to me below about it. I love you. Thank you for watching this video. And, um, hmm. Interesting. All right, bye.